It's been a while since I've done a video in this series of discontinued fragrances. I've got seven parts on the channel already, and this is part number eight of 15 discontinued fragrances that you should search out and find and buy. If you want to find out about these fragrances, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's Sebastian. We're talking about discontinued fragrances today. Some of these fragrances are on their way out now. Find them. They might be less expensive. Some of them are already discontinued or hard to find, and some are very expensive, but definitely worth it. These are some of the, my favorite fragrances. I've spoken about them on the channel in the past. Some I haven't because I haven't had my hands on them until recently, but I'm going to let you know about these uh, fragrances. But before I do, you should go ahead and check out my previous videos in this series, there's seven of them, and each video features 15 fragrances, male, female, unisex targeted releases all over the place with uh, the styles. And uh, you'll find some really interesting fragrances with a bonus section of uh, additional fragrances. And I've got a bonus section in this video as well. Not necessarily discontinued yet, but potentially. But either way, let's go ahead and get started. Going to the house of Tom Ford, always include a Tom Ford on this list because they're always discontinued, discontinuing fragrances and launching new ones all the time. So this was an eau de toilette version of uh, one of the fragrances from the male signature line called Noir. Noir was an amazing fragrance. I think it's still around somewhat. You can find it. But Noir EDT is definitely discontinued and definitely less animalic take on the original Noir, which I really like. Uh, I really like the, or the original Noir. Not Noir de Noir, but Noir. But this version seemed like it was freshened up. Here's the bottle right here. So this is amber with warm notes, spicy notes, musk, woods, citrusy notes, mint, and herbs. Let's go ahead and take a quick sniff of this one. Let me know if you were a fan of the original Noir and uh, have you sampled the Noir Eau de Toilette? Yeah, you can totally smell the musk. You know, it's a musk. The original in the Eau de Parfum in the dark bottle was definitely a musk. And I think that's probably why it didn't do very well. Not many people liked it because it was somewhat animalic. And here you have the original in there, but it's much fresher, but still has these warm notes under there. I think this is really, really good. Those of you that wanted to wear warm fragrances, musky fragrances, but didn't want to smell very musky and intense, Noir EDT. Uh, it's a bummer it's gone, but if you can find yourself a bottle, definitely get it because I think that's really, really a great fragrance. One of the best from Tom Ford when they were really doing some really great fragrances. Moving on to the house of Gila Roche. This is Horizon, this one right here. This came out in the mid 90s. The Tom Ford Noir Eau de Toilette came out in uh, the early part of the 2010s. But this is uh, Horizon, one of my favorite bottles from the 90s. It's uh, definitely an aromatic fragrance, but it has very unusual notes like aldehydes and pine and oak moss and leather, mint and green notes and carnation, lavender, and much more. It's a chock full of notes created by, God, I forgot the name of the perfumer, but let's go ahead and smell it and I'll give you my opinion on this one. It's a great one. It's not Drakkar, it's the same brand, but uh, very fresh kind of piney, very aromatic, also soapy. Aldehydes, aldehydes adds major soapiness, but it's a really, really great fragrance. This is when they were doing really intense, super potent fragrances. And even though this is kind of on the freshy side because of the aldehydes, it has that kind of vintage smell that it don't make fragrances like this anymore. They really do not. It's so, so super soapy and also like a pine forest at the same time. Amazing fragrance, man. This is so good. It's bummer it's discontinued. But recently there was a stock of... Um, uh, stock out there at the discounters so somehow they some some uh, the discounters ended up with stock so you might find some out there so take advantage of that if you like you know uh, masculine fragrances from the 90s but moving on to the house of Armani this is from the Armani Privé collection this is Mer Imperial this one right here this was one of the best from Armani Armani Privé collection and it got discontinued but I think 
maybe because people don't really understand myrrh, what it smells like and things like that. You know, they'll understand amber, but it gets a little more complicated with the word myrrh because it's a resin. And what does it smell like? Have you smelled actually myrrh, the actual resins? I have. This is not only myrrh though, it's myrrh with benzoin and vanilla, saffron and pink pepper. So aromatic, spicy, leathery, very vanillic and ambery. So basically they're creating an amber effect with this one, with the fact that it has the myrrh, benzoin and vanilla and it's also got the leather for sure the saffron creates a leathery touch but it's be it's beautiful it's very dark it's very ambery it's resinous and a bit animalic from the saffron but i think it's because of the combination of the uh, the notes together i don't think there's really any animalic notes in here but it's gorgeous it's a gorgeous fragrance very dark resinous ambery smoky as well because i believe that myrrh note has a bit of smokiness there yeah it's discontinued it's a bummer but uh, if you can get your hands on this one do get it it's going to be tougher and more expensive than some other fragrances like this next one which just got discontinued and i just found out about the discontinuation of this one about four or five months ago i didn't know this is hermes equipage geranium such a great fragrance this is it's such a bummer it's discontinued I've got three quarters of a bottle still and I love this one I really love it because it reminds me of a modern day fougere with the geranium note the geranium and the spices in here it's a sandalwood fragrance originally the original equipage but this time they've done amped it up with like uh, the aromatic spiciness of geranium which is typically found in fougere fragrances but this one to me also reminds me a little bit of chanel's boy fragrance from the less exclusive but this is definitely much less expensive but such a great fragrance guys if you can get your hands on this one really do it is one of the best from hermes's fragrances and uh, it's a bummer it's discontinued it also performed really nicely on me and i like the whole geranium take on kind of a barbershoppy sandal woody spicy fragrance so this is equipage geranium from the house of hermes if you know that one if you don't know it check it out if you can find it do take advantage of that one because i don't know how much stock will be out there because it i don't think it was ever a very popular fragrance but let me go ahead and quickly smell this one um yeah it's a wonderful fragrance and uh I do get the similarities to Boy from Chanel. I don't know if you guys do or not. But uh, the geranium in this reminds me of the geranium in Boy. Very spicy for sure. It's overdose of geranium. It's a bit rosy. There's also... Um, I feel like there's a the cardamom spice in here and there's that kind of woody creaminess from the sandalwood. Definitely a wonderful offering. It's a bummer that this is gone, but if there's nobody buying fragrances, then they're going to discontinue it. And the next fragrance I'm going to talk to you about is from the House of Tower Perfumes. This is Unrose Chypre. This one right here. Do you guys know this one? Tower Perfumes has Incense Rosé, and this was the other rose fragrance from this house, and it was so different compared to the other. This is rose, a couple of different kinds of roses with bay leaves, cinnamon, patchouli, geranium, oak moss, labdanum, bergamot, clementine, lemons, a vetiver. Lots going on here. It's got that um, Tower Perfumes DNA that everybody seems to love that's a fan of the brand. But it's a different take on the DNA. It's going into the rosy direction. It's very syrupy for me when I wear this one. And it acts really great. But it's sad it's discontinued. But I, it makes sense if they don't sell and they're not going to, you know, keep the fragrances around. But yeah, this is a very jammy, very syrupy rose. And the DNA of the tower uh, fragrances is way in the back. You can totally recognize it, really. He's got his own signature DNA, the Tower Odd. It's in here with that whole jammy, syrupy, the syrupy rose, and also, you know, the typical notes that are found in a sheep ray fragrance, oak moss, labdanum, bergamot, patchouli, uh, wonderful offering. So this is um, Unrose Sheep Ray from the House of Tower Perfumes. Let me know if you're a fan of that one. Speaking of uh, fougeres with the Hermes a little while ago, or like a barbershop fragrance, this one is definitely discontinued from Amouage. It's Bracken Man. This one created by Olivier Cresp. Ah, oh, we've got... No, this is the only one so far created by Olivier Cresp. This one, to me, was kind of like the anti 
Hubigan Fougere Royale, not necessarily anti, just a different take on that kind of a fragrance. It reminded me of Fougere Royale, but it was different in that it had warm spices in it like cloves and cinnamon. The cloves are very amped up in here, but typically, well, not typically, but in Fougere Royale, there's carnation. Carnation cloves smell similar, so they're substituting this fragrance without the carnation with the cloves, but it's cloves, cypress, lavender, nutmeg, geranium, patchouli, lemons, bergamot, cedar, sandalwood, cinnamon. I don't know why. Why they discontinued this one but maybe there's too many fougeres out there you know but uh, it's a definitely really great fragrance it's sad it's gone and uh, as you can see my bottle uh, had the the little uh, this this design fall off uh, and I had to tape it back on. But this fragrance, it's a great fragrance. If you can get your hands on it, I think it's just recently gotten discontinued, uh, but definitely one of my favorite fougeres. They've kept the women's uh, uh, Bracken. They have Bracken Woman, but uh, Bracken Man is discontinued. But let's go ahead and quickly smell it just so I can tell you a little bit more about it. As soon as you smell it, you've got that whole kind of uh, metallic, sharp, aromatic, herbal note uh, combo of lavender and geranium. But it warms up and it, uh, you know, the longer you live it on, the cloves really amplify and become very like warm, spicy, but really great fragrance. Wonderful offering. Sad it's gone. This is Bracken Man from Amouage. All right, going to the house of Maison Margiela. This is Wicked Love, this one right here. So this one was part of that exclusive collection, more of an upper-end collection of Maison Margiela fragrances that came in Eau de Parfum concentration. They had five of them. They got discontinued. Uh, they're not selling here anymore and probably not in Europe either. But what I like, this was the first one I got from this house in this collection because I like that whole green bell pepper combo with roses and that's kind of the combo here. So it's a very green rose fragrance with basil, hyacinth, jasmine, white musk, vetiver, and cedar. There's, a, there's another fragrance on the market similar to this. It's called Eloge du Verte from the house of uh, Le Parfum de Rosine. They're different when in that there's different notes along with the rose and bell peppers, but they reminded me of one another. Let's quickly smell this and let you know a little bit about it. Yeah, this one to me, the bell pepper seems a little different and also the basil is very amped up in this one, so it's kind of herbal at the same time as vegetal with the green bell pepper. But still, very similar kind of fragrance uh, idea. Uh, it's a bummer, it's gone. But let me know if you're a fan of Wicked Love. It's a wonderful offering from that house, but sadly it's discontinued. But moving on to the house of YSL, we've got Live Jazz here. Are you a fan of Live Jazz? Um, jazz was a popular fragrance from the late 80s for YSL, and I believe li Live Jazz came out in... Is it this way? Yeah, this way. Live Jazz came out in the 90s, and it was kind of a fresher take on jazz, more aromatic and minty kind of take on it, and it was very refreshing, a kind of like a cocktail of uh, herbs and, uh, you know, uh, aromatics and citruses. That was the idea. But uh, a wonderful bottle, wonderful looking bottle right there. Uh, as far as the fragrance goes, it'll remind you of the original Jazz, which is an amazing fragrance featuring that coriander. Very old school, kind of powerhouse-ish, but more modernized towards the 80s, late 80s. But this one just kind of really freshened up. But it'll remind you of the original, but you've got that rhubarb with its fruity kind of vegetal touch. Uh, and then it has kind of like an ambery dry down as well. Wonderful offering. This is such a great fragrance and such a cool looking bottle. I absolutely love this uh, let me know if you're a fan of uh, this fragrance. This is when YSL used to do really great fragrances. Sadly, myself is uh, a dud. Uh, if you guys didn't catch my short... Um, it smells great when you first smell it, but then when you keep smelling it... Uh, boring. Moving on to the house of Gucci. This is Gucci Guilty Cologne. This one right here. This was actually a breath of fresh air, literally. A very refreshing fragrance. Kind of a old school, modernized, tonic, men's cologne, splash, barbershop kind of a fragrance idea. Really job well done. Uh, a great job well done with um, the perfumer Alberto Morias and the... Uh, the creative director of the brand at that time. They have a new creative director, and stay tuned for the bonus section. I'm going to talk a little bit more about Gucci. But this is a really unusually unique fragrance for Gucci, and probably it was too unique 
and it, it got discontinued. There's still bottles out there, get them if you can. But this features notes of juniper berries, cypress, rosemary, violet, heliotrope, white musk, cedar, patchouli, and bergamot. Very unusual notes, very unusual smell, but I loved it. It was different. It was kind of adventurous for a Gucci fragrance, you know? Especially in the Guilty line. You can totally smell the juniper berries. It's got this kind of freshness, this uh, spicy aromatic touch. But it's very powdery because it's got heliotrope and violet. Such a great fragrance. Such a disappointing. These fragrances just come and go really quickly, sadly. And uh, we, you know, we got to keep up with these brands. But the next fragrance going to the house of Penhaligons. It's Extract of Limes. This is so, so good. This is kind of old school citric, uh, citric astringent cologne-like fragrance featuring lemons, lime, pentagram, and neroli. The smell is fantastic. This stuff really, if you like the idea of tart limes in a fragrance, some these are the kind of fragrances I like in very hot climates, very humid climates. It's really, really cuts through the heat and smells fantastic. This, you might still find some you know, bottles out there as well, but I think it's discontinued. But this is so delicious, really, really. If you like the idea of tart citruses, you got to get your nose on this because it smells fantastic. Totally. There's under there, there's some aromatic touches, lightly barbershoppy, but more in a cologne style, more in a citrus style barbershoppy fragrance. So good. You can smell the lemons. You can smell the, the, the rinds and the peel, uh, and it's fantastic. So extract of limes for Penhaligons. Definitely a great fragrance. It is old school, so you got to be into old school fragrances, guys. But it's good. So going to the house of imaginary authors, it's Violet Disguise. Do you know this one? Violet Disguise was, I don't think, a very successful fragrance from this house. But I really liked it because it was violet in a fruity direction. Violet leaves has a fruitiness, but this one combined it with plums and dry amber resins and um, dried fruits. I shouldn't say dry amber. I meant to say dry, dry, dried fruits and amber. So it does get fruity. The violet has a fruitiness, although it's powdery. The plums are very, very fruity. And I love the plums in this really nice, a very substantial plummy smell. So it was kind of confusing. Is it a violet fragrance? Is it a plummy fragrance? But the name is Violet Disguise, and obviously they have violets in the notes. And sadly, it's discontinued. Maybe they'll bring it, he'll bring it back. But let me quickly smell it for you yeah very violet forward very and then also very plummy the fruitiness is there definitely if you like the idea of plums in fragrances this is definitely very very plummy it smells of plums and it's juicy like it's like the ripened plums uh, but uh, not necessarily uber sweet because there's a tartness there as well and that's what I like about it because I like the idea of sweet tart plums and so that's what that smells like the combination of the violets and as I said it does get powdery because violets do get powdery uh, when you're you know in perfume so this is violet disguise from imaginary authors the next one is from the house of by Killian this was a Moscow exclusive it's criminal of love coming in a box like this uh, I ordered this back in 2016 15 uh, I was uh, really into the idea of these exclusive fragrances and at that time I was really into Killian fragrances sadly I'm not that much into Killian fragrances anymore um, they're kind of boring to me now but this fragrance came with uh, s and paraphernalia go figure criminal of love that's the name of this fragrance, and this is the bottle. I don't have too much left in it, although it's not all the way down where you can see it, but um, uh, it's got a tassel. This features notes of rose, tobacco, patchouli, incense, immortelle, cedar, papyrus, cardamom, and saffron. Who sampled this one? This fragrance never made it here. It was a, like a Moscow exclusive for like a couple of different stores. But to me, the papyrus is so substantial in this. Uh, the tobacco is dirty, ashy. The rose is jammy, but also dry. It's a dry fragrance, but super delicious, super delicious. This is one of the best from Killian, hands down. Uh, it is a wonderful offering from Killian. And I, I should show you what it comes with. I, I don't even know. I haven't really looked, but it came with some kind of, uh, I don't know, handcuffs or something for, you know, doing some things uh, in the bedroom. But... Um, 
with uh, if you're into the idea of S and M, I guess. So that is Criminal of Love by Killian. Let me know if you've gotten your nose on that one. Put a comment down below. But moving on to the House of Mugler, it's Over the Musk. This is it right here. God, this is such a popular fragrance. Maybe I popularized it because uh, I never heard anybody else talk about it. And I get so many people asking me where they can buy this fragrance. It didn't come in a box like this when they first launched. Then when L'Oreal took it over, they launched some bottles like that. And then now it's gone forever. Over the Musk was Mugler's take on lightly gourmand musk fragrance. It is kind of gourmand dish, but it's different. It's got lots of ambrette with cashmere wood and pink pepper and, of course, musk. And it's amazing. It's a great fragrance. Only thing I complained about this one was it was kind of a skin scent for me because it's musk and musks are not big fragrances. Uh, some people said it was really strong on them, but for me, it wears very close to the skin and it makes sense for me because it's a musk, but... I always thought that this, since this is a Mugler, it will be a lot more intense at the time, but it wasn't. But still, love the muskiness, love the pepperiness, the woodiness, and then there's some light gourmandy touches under there like the Mugler DNA would have. But this was created by Olivier Polge and also Jean-Christophe Herrell. A really, really great fragrance. Over the Musk is super amazing. If you can find it, get it. But a lot of people are asking me, and I'm like... I don't know where you can get a bottle. The next fragrance going to the House of Aramis. It's JHL. This one right here. Uh, honestly, guys, this collection, I think, is on its way out. So if you're a fan of this collection, do get it now. Like the Havana and Devon and uh, a bunch of others. Like, uh, I forgot the name. The Tuscany Per Uomo. Uh, many more. But I bought the entire collection during the pandemic. But I had already had 900 and the, uh, the Havana when I bought them. The rest of the collection, this one was the one that was the most difficult to get. They were not at the discounters. I bought it for suggested retail for about $90. Now this is selling for about $300, sadly. It's so freaking expensive. It's a great fragrance, but you know what? You can probably go with the woman's alternative because Aramis fragrances under Estee Lauder were creating the male equivalent and the women's equivalent and i believe the women's equivalent of this is called cinnabar so if you like a cinnamony spicy red hots kind of fragrance this is the one for you to try uh let me smell it for you here on camera it's been a while uh yeah it's old school but very cinnamony very clovey as well but we're taking the clovey smell from the carnations in this case because it's got a clovey smell here with benzoin aldehydes sandalwood rose amber patchouli labdanum ylang ylang fir musk and orange it's definitely very very old school again you can probably get away with wearing cinnabar because i think cinnabar under estee lauder is still around and probably created by the same perfumer i think this is a bernard chant creation and i believe he created cinnabar as well but this is great if you like cinnamony fragrances that are like red hot Get your nose on this one if you can but bottles are selling for really really expensive i don't know what happened and again as i was saying when i bought the remainder of the collection during the height of the pandemic this one was not available at the discounters and now obviously nobody is selling it and it's really priced high so that is jhl by aramis a fragrance my dad wore in the 80s and then the last but not least recent discontinuation feb delicious guys it's no longer yeah, I was at uh, Neiman Marcus recently, and they don't have it there anymore. And uh, I did a video on how this fragrance was getting discontinued, uh, and it's gone now. But this is, has been one of my favorite Dior Privé collection fragrances. Tonka beans, powdery, beautiful, gorgeous, uh, you know, uh, bitter, almondy, but loads of yummy kind of gourmandish notes. And it was my favorite Tonka bean fragrance for, for the longest time. Now I'll have to go with uh, Tonka Imperial from uh, the House of Guerlain. But this one, I really loved the way it smelled. It was super, super delicious. But now it's discontinued. So that's Feb Delicious. Sadly, it's gone now. Let me know, those of you that are in France, if you can still get that. Because uh, some of the Privé collections can be purchased there. But I heard this was getting the axe completely. But I'm not 100% sure. Definitely no longer selling here in the States. Unless the stores that usually sell these have bottles laying around. Anyway, that's the last fragrance I'm talking about today. What are your thoughts on these discontinued fragrances? Do you have them? Have you been wanting them? Do you have a resource for 
where you can buy these fragrances at good prices. Do let us know. Put a comment down below. Let us know what other fragrances that you love that are discontinued that are worth buying. Put a comment down so I can find out and then perhaps do a part nine uh, in the next uh, several months. But this is part eight, as I said, and there's seven other videos on the channel. You can go catch them. I have a playlist. You can watch them back to back to back to back. But either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. So in the bonus section, I was mentioning I was going to talk about uh, some fragrances. I'm talking about the Gucci Alchemist Garden collection of fragrances. So recently I walked into a Gucci store with my mom and she it was her birthday. So we were buying some th things together and there was the Gucci Alchemist Garden collection there. But I spoke to the associate and she wasn't certain if this collection would stick around because Gucci now has a new creative director and the previous creative director, this was his baby. This was inspired by his uh, upbringing and things like that. So not sure that the collection would stick around. And also I'm not 100% sure if there's any new fragrances coming out under the new creative director with Gucci. So I haven't seen that. And is Alberto Moria still involved with creating the fragrances? I don't even know. But a lot of the Gucci Alchemist Garden collections, well, all of them are, I think, created by Alberto Moria's. And we're also under the last creative director, the previous creative director. So she said that the associate said she's uncertain if this collection will stay around. And I'm not 100% sure that this collection will stay around either first i don't think it really did very well overpriced non-refillable not like the louis vuitton uh, you know luxury collection that you know is still around and you only you can only do it at their stores so you have to go in and refill and things like that these are under coty and remember caring owns coty but the fragrances for Gucci are under Coty. So I don't know what that deal is, how long they'll be around, but most likely this collection will get discontinued. And remember, Bottega Veneta was also, uh, is also under Coty for fragrances, but also owned by Kering. And remember, they had the Parco Palladiano collection. They got a new creative director, and that creative director discontinued that collection. So again, I don't know how long this series of Alchemist Garden collection fragrances will be around. If you're a fan of these, I would say get yourself some bottles because they may be on their way out. Uh, I don't know. Oh boy, coloring change it changes. Uh, so yeah, I've got some of them here I'm showing you, but uh, just be warned that these might be on their way out. Because sometimes when a new creative director comes into a fashion house, they do a cleanup and they get rid of everything that the previous person that was running the show did and they fill it up with stuff that they came up with. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. See you guys later. Bye.